Hello, stockers, and thank you for coming to this session. Uh, in this session, we are going to be talking about the operation of uh, OpenStack-based uh, cloud service, uh, and which have been providing, uh, we are providing to the customer for more than one and a half years. And especially, we are going to be focusing on handling the multiple alerts and the automation of operation, some of the versions. And the uh, uh, presentation title is How to Manage Multi-Location, Multi-Component Cloud Services, uh, Take Control of Your Alerts. And the presenters are Shohei Okada, myself, and Takashi Tazoe. Uh, firstly, let us introduce about myself, ourselves. Uh, hello, uh, my name is Takashi Tazoe. Uh, I'm a system administrator at NTT Communications in Japan. And uh, I have been with this uh, company almost four years, and uh, I have engaged in OpenStack Cloud project uh, almost one year. Uh, I take part in uh, uh, virtual and physical server and the network management, and uh, also uh, operational automation. So. And uh, I'm Shohei Okada, and I'm uh, working with this project for about more than two, two years. And I'm in charge of virtual server and bare metal and storage operation. And uh, I'm the server operator. So let us go on to the, uh, today's session. Uh, here's the agenda for today. Uh, firstly, we're going to talk about the introduction of our company and our cloud services. And after that, uh, basic operation flow and program. And talking, uh, talking to, uh, about the measures, about alert control, and about auto remediation. And after that, we're going to make a demonstration and talking about the conclusion and the future task. So let us introduce about our company and our cloud services. Our, our company, uh, NTT Communications, is the group company of NTT. NTT is headquartered in Tokyo and one of the biggest Japanese uh, telecom com communication company. And NTT Communications ourselves is uh, headquartered in Tokyo, and we have uh, offices in more than 40 countries and regions, and more than 20,000 people are working there. And we have several services such as uh, Global Cloud or Data Centers or VPN and Global Tier 1 Internet Backbone or, and so on. And we are going to focus on the Global Cloud that is based on uh, OpenStack. Uh, here in this session. So let us introduce about our uh, global cloud, uh, which name is Enterprise Cloud. Uh, it's based on the OpenStack, and it's uh, provided to uh, worldwide. So we have eight regions uh, in all over the world, uh, such as uh, United States or United Kingdom or Singapore, uh, Deutsch and Hong Kong and Australia and Japan. And we have two operation centers. One is in Tokyo and one is in uh, Mumbai. And global affiliates are working with the customer ticket, uh, such as NTT America, Europe, and so on, are working with a customer, handling the customer ticket and uh, ask, uh, answering the inquiry from the customers. And our cloud is connected to the, uh, our colocation services called Next Center. And it's also connected to the uh, third party clouds such as AWS or Amazon uh, Azure services. So, for better understanding, uh, here's the production image of our enterprise clouds, cloud. And we are providing the virtual server in bare metal and storage and network and so on in the net enterprise cloud. And uh, it's also connected to the colocation service and also connected to third party clouds uh, such as AWS and uh, Azure. And we can uh, manage and check the resource usage or cost, uh, cost uh, from the cloud management portal that we have, have been providing to the customer. So let me go into the basic operation flow and problems. So here's the basic, very basic operation flow. Uh, firstly, we'll uh, detect alerts uh, from our integrated monitoring system. And after that, create the instant ticket and conduct root cause analysis and conduct remediation processes. So I will uh, pick up uh, these steps and I will make a uh, detailed explanation and pick up some problem from now on. So, as for the alert detection step, uh, we are using the integrated monitoring system, uh, and devices are monitored with each other. So 
The problem is that uh, we might receive multiple devices if the multi-connected devices get down status. So for further explanation, this slide, uh, I will use this slide. So in case of maintenance, and if the, suppose that uh, server C in this slide is uh, shut down or down status, so we will be getting alerts from, of course, uh, from server C, uh, but also A, B, D, E devices as well. So in case of the maintenance, uh, it's easier to identify the uh, target device because the, it's pro predicted, predicted. Uh, but in case of outage or failure, uh, it's, it's going to be more hard to uh, identify the root cause uh, because uh, we are just uh, receiving multiple alerts uh, from multiple devices. And we need to take some time uh, to identify the root cause and uh, check some, some statuses. And after that, we will find out that uh, server C is down. So it's a program in this uh, phase. So let's go back to the operation flow again and go on to the create instant ticket phase step. And we are creating instant ticket by our own ticket system. Uh, it, is used, it can be used for customer communication as well. And we write the alarm information and work logs uh, we have conducted uh, manually to these tickets and update to the customer or internally. And after that, go on to the root cause analysis. Uh, we follow the run book and checking the status or run jobs or scripts. And sometimes we conduct tests such as VM creation or something like that. And after that, uh, go to the remediation following the run book as well. So restarting the process or rebooting the server, VM migration or hardware comp uh, replacement is included in this step. So let me raise one example for better understanding uh, for this operation flow. So uh, let us suppose that uh, one of the hypervisor got a hardware error, uh, such as memory, memory error, like that. Uh, so in that case, uh, we will be uh, receiving a sign of failure in the integrated monitoring system. And after that, we create the instant ticket manually uh, and update the information of, our, uh, of the alert information or work log there. And after that, uh, go on to the checking hypervisor status and confirm the issue. And after that, uh, if possible, we will uh, live migrate, uh, conduct live migration of the VMs on that server uh, to other servers, uh, normal servers. Uh, so, and then uh, if the hypervisor is uh, without VM, uh, we will conduct the replace, shut down, shut down the server and go on to the replacement. So, here's a pr some problems uh, because we need to take several steps, uh, four steps, uh, before we conduct remediation, such as live migration. Uh, so if the uh, operators are working with some other incidents or outage, and if the uh, troubleshooting has been delayed, uh, there might be, a, during that time, uh, there might be a risk uh, that the hypervisor with customer, customer VMs get down. And if the custom, a uh, hypervisor with customer VM go down status, uh, of course, uh, VMHA will be happened and VM will be migrated to other servers, uh, but it's accompanied with uh, VM reboot. So it means the customer, uh, customer impact will be occurred. So this is the, uh, one of the problem uh, because we need to take some actions manually. So for uh, these problems, uh, Next, uh, from the next slide, uh, Tazoe-san will going to uh, talk about the solutions for these problems. Okay, thank you. And uh, uh, until now, uh, we have talked about uh, about uh, basic operational flow and the problem we have faced. And uh, from this uh, slide, uh, I will talk about the measures for these problems we have taken. Our uh, first thing is measures for maintenance-related alerts. Uh, the main problems in this chapter uh, is the numerous alerts caused by a frequent code update, a deployment, and uh, device maintenance, and something, some kind of uh, operation in production and uh, in parallel. Uh, recently, our uh, development tool uh, improved very much, and the uh, code update deployment number become larger and larger. 
And it is a very good thing uh, for agile development. Uh, but uh, from operation side, uh, it, me it, it means that it becomes much complicated to connect maintenance information, uh, maintenance and alerts. And uh, this complexity uh, takes a lot, a lot of time for operator to, uh, to find out uh, these alerts are maintenance related or real alerts and uh, remediation is required or not and the uh, system status is uh, normal or not. So uh, we needed to take an action uh, for this uh, problems. Uh, for this problem, uh, we prepare a function that hide maintenance related alert by analyzing configuration information and uh, make a correlation of maintenance and alerts. Uh, let me explain it with this slide. At first, uh, we gathered configuration information to one server. And uh, this configuration information uh, includes uh, device connection information, such as uh, device A, port 2, is connected to device C, port 1, and some, some kind of information. And in addition to do that, uh, we uh, gathered hypervisor VM relation and the component and service relation and other, other information uh, which is required to analyze the uh, uh, correlation. And when maintenance is, is scheduled, uh, operator inputs maintenance information to this function. The information contains a maintenance target and a maintenance duration and what kind of uh, operation uh, will be do. Uh, for example, device, sub device reboot, process reboot, and link connection change, and, and configuration change, or, or something like that. And when input is completed, this function starts to analyze the configuration uh, information and uh, create an out outage-related alert patterns as an output. This output uh, works as a filter over our integrated monitoring system. It means that these pattern alerts come to um, integrate our monitoring system. Uh, these patterns are hidden uh, from uh, operator's view, uh, view with this function. Uh, in this way, uh, operator can only concentrate on the real alerts and uh, uh, they, they can uh, you know, they can concentrate on the remediation of them. A second thing, a measure for multiple alerts from outage. The problem itself is almost uh, similar to previous one. Uh, when outage happens, uh, multiple alerts will be occurred uh, from the device C, uh, I mean uh, outage device, and the uh, uh, surrounding device too. And it makes operation comp comp complex. So we need to take action for that. And the difference between the previous one and this one uh, is the predictivity. Uh, in maintenance, uh, operator cannot uh, what and when and where uh, will be happened uh, in advance. However, uh, outage cannot. So we need to prepare some function that when uh, outage happens, uh, analyzing the correlation between the outage and the uh, alert relationship. Uh, for these problems, uh, we, uh, we set the triggers, uh, triggered alerts and uh, predefined uh, analyzing pattern for uh, typical outage uh, such as device down. Let me explain it with this slide. And uh, when device C goes down in this slide, a pin energy alerts and uh, other alerts from device, real, uh, device and uh, link down and uh, link down energy, uh, link down alerts uh, from a device surrounding a surrounding device connected to a device C will be detected in our monitoring system. And we set a trigger alert that uh, server down for pin energy. So in this case, a pin energy from device C is a trigger alert of this alert, uh, this outage. And. Uh, when the uh, trigger alerts come to uh, integrate our monitoring system, uh, this function are detected and start to analyze the configuration. And uh, this function uh, create output as a main, uh, outage related alert patterns as the previous one. And uh, when calculation is completed, uh, this function start mark them as a low priority. Uh, in this way, uh, 
trigger alert is highlighted and the operator can only con concentrate on, re on of the remediation of the trigger alert. And uh, I have a prepare, I, I prepared regarding this function of, uh, of demonstration. So let me show you. Uh, this is our, oh, sorry. Uh, this is, hmm? uh, this is our, oops, sorry for that. Wait a second, please. Uh, sorry for capture waiting. I reopen our file. Really? <laughs> uh, well, doesn't work. <laughs> uh, works well. Uh, I skipped uh, it and uh, currently uh, shut down the device as an audio simulation. And uh, when shut down, oh, is it okay? oh. <laughs> uh, when shut down is completed, uh, well, Multiple alerts will be detected in our monitoring system, like this. Uh, these alerts are caused by one outage. Uh, at this point, uh, it's hard to uh, judge that what is the root cause and what should be done uh, by uh, operators. So uh, in the background, uh, this function starts to calculate uh, related alert patterns. And when calculation is completed, this function starts to mark them as green. Uh, it means uh, low priority in our operational role like this, like this. At this point, uh, operators know that what is the root cause. A root cause is highlighted pink, and the other is green. So they can focus on the remediation of this uh, root cause. And in addition to that, in the background, this function also create a, sorry, incident ticket that reports, uh, that reports this outage. And uh, furthermore, the ticket number is uh, written in the uh, operation, uh, operator note of each alert. Okay, uh, each alert. And in this way, uh, without this function, uh, uh, when outage happens, operator needs to uh, take an action to uh, find what is the root cause and uh, what is the related alert, a, relation, a relationship between the alerts, and create an incident ticket and uh, uh, write back a ticket number to alerts. Uh, however, uh, with this function, uh, operator know what is the root cause, and, uh, and a, a ticket is created automatically, and the ticket number is connected to each alert. So uh, operator only focus on the remediation and uh, start to uh, remediate, uh, remediate immediately and uh, record the operational log to incident ticket. Uh, incident ticket. So. And the third thing uh, uh, is approach for auto remediation. Our previous two, uh, two measures is uh, mainly focused on uh, alert control uh, to make uh, manual operation simple. Uh, this is an approach for uh, operation, uh, automate op automation itself. And uh, at first, uh, we would like to uh, talk, uh, talk about a uh, uh, basic operation policy uh, uh, when we consider auto, re auto remediation. Uh, when, uh, when operation is simple enough, uh, we consider auto remediation first, and uh, especially uh, a major major outage. That means a frequent a frequent outage and a large impact outage. Uh, on the ha on the other hand, uh, when operation is too complicated or too risky for automation, uh, we consider that documentation. I mean, create a round book and uh, or create a support a support tool for manual operation. Uh, such as database corruption or something like that. And, and, when, and when these operations become simple enough uh, through this process, 
or uh, the impact become larger due to situation change. Uh, these operations become the uh, uh, next uh, candidates for auto remediation. Uh, this is our basic policy for auto remediation. And uh, I prepare our auto remediation patterns uh, today, uh, a demonstration. Uh, before that, uh, I would like to uh, introduce the overview of, uh, to this demo. Uh, in our demo, uh, hard hypervisor minor error, which doesn't have a service impact, will be de detected. And this, uh, this alert is a sign for uh, a major, major outage uh, that causes customer impact or the VM on hypervisor. So uh, we need to avoid it. Uh, to avoid it, uh, our auto remediation function uh, starts to live migrate all the, all the beams on outage hypervisor to normal hypervisor as a preventive maintenance. This kind of preventive maintenance is very important to uh, make, a, make higher ability service. So this kind of main, uh, operation should be done quickly and uh, correctly. So I prepared a demonstration, so let me show you. I wish it worked well. And uh, yeah, this is uh, our monitoring system and uh, cleaned up. And uh, uh, also ticket system is also cleaned up. And uh, this is the current status of hypervisor. Uh, there's a 3BM or hypervisor. And uh, I create uh, some kind of certain kind of file to simulate, to emulate uh, a minor outage. And uh, when, when minor outage happens, uh, auto remediation functions uh, uh, go into the uh, pre confirmation phase. Uh, it means that uh, what is the current status of the outage hypervisor and uh, find a uh, normal status hypervisor for live migration. And this, uh, this is a, a status of each hypervisor. Upper, hyper, uh, upper half is a, a outage hypervisor status, and the bottom one is a normal hypervisor status. And currently, uh, pre-confirmation phase, so there's nothing happened. However, uh, when pre-confirmation -pre phase are finished, uh, this function uh, go into the migration phase. And when migration phase, uh, server uh, beams, uh, on upper side becomes uh, the status become migrating and move to the bottom with active status one by one. Uh, it takes uh, several seconds or several minutes and uh, the time of the uh, VM live migration is due to the uh, you know, uh, VM size or VM usage status. So wait a second. Currently second one is become migrating and move to the bottom in seconds like this. And last one. I become migrating. And move to the bottom. It means normal hypervisor. Uh, at this point, uh, all the VM on outage hypervisor move to normal hypervisor uh, automatically. So uh, when lab migra migration is completed, uh, this function uh, moves on, on to a post-confirmation status, a confirmation phase. Uh, it means that all VM is really moved from, uh, moved from uh, outage hypervisor, and all the VM on normal hypervisor works well, uh, really, uh, co correctly, and so on. And in addition to do that, uh, as same as previous, uh, previous demonstration, uh, incident ticket that report this incident is also created. Uh, previous demonstration doesn't have any, any operation in production servers. However, in this demonstration, I did. So in post-confirmation, uh, when post-confirmation phase is completed, uh, this function uh, attaches all the operation log into incident ticket. So. Uh, I skip a demonstration for a while. Oh, and up, uh, it doesn't work. Uh, but and, uh, uh, I tried to show you the result, but it doesn't work. But uh, yeah, uh, but I, 
uh, in the demonstration, operation log uh, is attached to incident ticket, and the uh, operator can consent uh, start to uh, operation. Uh, uh, operator can understand the uh, before situation, or before the hypervisor situation, and the uh, operation itself, and the uh, post situation, uh, post situation of hypervisor uh, with this log, and start to uh, take an action based on that if further action is required. So uh, that's all uh, we have uh, problems we have faced and the measures we have taken. So I'd like to conclude our presentation uh, with future works. Uh, conclusion, uh, we, uh, we encountered uh, too many alerts uh, in, uh, in production uh, that, that is due to the large scale and complex cloud service. Uh, in service. And uh, we monitor, uh, t to monitor them, a large scale and, uh, you know, a complicated monitoring system, it is difficult to monitor it with uh, one MMS. So uh, we, we use um, a much kind of monitoring, uh, such as, uh, for example, a service level, we use Jenkins or script, uh, our own script monitoring. And the resource on the process, a uh, resource and process level, we use Zabbix. And the uh, hardware level, uh, we use, uh, you know, uh, vendor default functions. So, uh, but uh, the, so in this situation, it's, uh, it's difficult to keep monitoring item disjoint. So uh, we gathered uh, these kind of alerts into one system and uh, make a correlation out there. And uh, mainly, uh, the, when considering about the correlation, uh, we, we mainly focus on the maintenance related alerts and outage alerts. In addition to do that, uh, we uh, automate the operation, uh, some, ki some kind of operation aut automated. Uh, future work, uh, there's a lot of work to be a uh, more sophisticated operation. Our uh, first thing is expand auto remediation patterns, uh, but keep our uh, monitoring system itself simple. Uh, to do that, we needed to prepare some kind of framework to uh, gain a maximum benefit with, mi with min minimal efforts. And uh, also tr uh, try to keep the monitoring system uh, itself simple, uh, like keep monitoring item disjoint and uh, monitoring way, uh, simple monitoring way. And second is monitoring setting automation. Uh, currently, uh, we set monitoring threshold by hand, uh, but it is difficult to uh, decide the appropriate monitoring threshold. It means one second is okay, two seconds is okay, but three seconds energy or something like that. Uh, and, and inappropriate uh, threshold may cause uh, multi, uh, too many uh, missed alerts, or on the other hand, undetected outage. Uh, furthermore, uh, recently, a uh, deployment pace, uh, deployment number become larger, larger, larger. So uh, system system specification uh, change uh, day day by day. So we need to automate. Uh, it is required to automate it uh, to catch up the uh, situation change. A third thing is uh, preparing uh, enough troubleshooting functions. In our, uh, today's our presentation, uh, all the major problems and measures are predefined workflow. However, uh, there's a lot of unknown issue in production. So, so for that, uh, we need to uh, prepare some uh, tool to uh, simplify the uh, root cause analysis or log, log correction a low correction, low correction function uh, for simple uh, troubleshooting by hand. So I, I, we will I'll keep working on to, you know, uh, these kind of topics uh, to, for more sophisticated operation. Uh, thanks for uh, listening. Uh, this is our uh, presentation all. So I'd like to move on to QA session if anyone have a question. Thank you, have, uh, thank you for listening.